In today's video, we're going to talk about tool change commands. Tool change commands are generally very easy, simple, but yet can be very confusing for some people. So in today's video, we will try to understand how the tool change commands are designed and why it's so important to give the tool change commands in the right order. To do a tool change, we simply need a T command and an M6 command. A T command is basically where you tell the system the tool number that you want to load. So for example, if you would like to load tool number three, we will first put in T three. So we're telling the system that we need tool three and then we put in M6 and M6 means change the tool. In some controllers, you can actually give the M6 command first and the T command later, but overall it can have a very different effect how the tool is loaded. So you might think that if we need to change tool 3, as in this example, we can give T3 M6 or we can give M6 and T3. But in reality, these are two different commands. The way they are executed inside the controller makes a huge difference on how we actually put the T or the M6 command first. To be able to understand the reason why it affects and how it works, let's first look at some different type of tool changes. The tool change command was designed keeping in mind that some bigger machines that can have a lot of tools uh, in their tool changes and it can take a long time for the tools to be loaded. So if we look at this type of tool changer, as you can see, by the time we give it a command to go and load the tool, it takes a long time. And imagine if you're running a production job and you need to do a lot of tool changes. So you're wasting a lot of time every time going there, picking up the tool, coming back. So to save time, when we initially start the program, for example, that's where we have to anyways give T2 M6 that we start off with tool number two. And we start machining with this tool, but down the track, we will need tool number three. So rather than first finishing the machining cycle with tool number two, and then going and fetching tool number three, we actually give another command in, in the very next line as T3 but we don't put any M6 command here. So what's gonna happen is while the controller is still machining, the tool changer is actually bringing tool number three into position and sitting there for the right time. And when in our controller, we need to do a tool change, so we are done with the first tool, we will actually have the M6 command. So what will happen is we just only have M6 command in this line is that the controller will issue a command to do a tool change now. So what's happened is effectively we've loaded the tool into position, tool number three, and now when we are done with machining with tool number two, we are changing the tool now. So the tool was just sitting there as soon as M6 command was given to the controller, the tool change happened, and straight away we started machining. So that's how the tool change commands are designed to save time on tool changes. Again, giving the command in right order has a huge difference. So if the command is not given in the right order, so you can be actually running a wrong tool with that command. Let's create a quick program to see how the tool commands will impact on the program. So here we have a small program where we are first loading tool one and then cutting a square of 100 by 100 millimeters and then we are cutting another square on the inside after loading tool two let's save that and if i press ctrl r to start this program so as you can see on the screen tool number one is already loaded so that's why the program started running straight away and it's machining that outer square and now the program is asking to load tool number two so 
in case of a manual tool change we do the tool change and then press enter and now you can see on the screen it's tool 2 that's been loaded and that's what's cutting the inner square so in this example this is the right way of loading the tool numbers so if we edit this I'm gonna press ctrl E and let's say if I give the same command afterwards so I'm gonna put a T1 here and T2 here so some people are gonna think oh it's, it's one and the same thing because both the commands are in the same line but that's where the whole difference comes in so I'm gonna just quickly save that So right now you can see on the screen that we have tool number two loaded. So I'm going to restart the program again, press Control R. And as you can see, the program is cutting the outer square, but it's got tool number two. And now when it goes through the next command, it's asking to load tool number one. Whereas over here we actually need tool number two. So what's happened is on the first M6 the controller started executing But in memory it saved T1 that that's that is the tool we need to load but That's not going to happen until the next M6 command and after completing the outer square it came down and then finished Now it's executing M6 first and in memory it's got T1 that is why it's saying hey load tool number one so in this scenario it's gonna damage something because you, you, you're loading the wrong tools you wanted tool one in uh, for the outer square and tool two for the inner square and as you can see this little bit of difference has huge impact so I'm gonna just press enter and now it's actually machining the inner square using tool number one and that is totally incorrect to what we wanted so i hope you found this video useful we had a request from a lot of clients who were using the tool commands the other way and getting confused or the, the controller loading the tools that they don't intend to load so we thought to do a quick video and hopefully this has been helpful please give your feedbacks and comments and if you would like to see any other video on uh, a different topic then please let us know. Thanks for watching and please visit our website for more details.